There is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. All right, let's go YouTube. So I'm gonna meet this real quick. Sure, I don't have my supplements set up. All right, so today we're going for 145 bench. Where's my scoop, dude? Sure, I should have set everything up. Actually, you know what? it's not the euphoria. Just do, let's do the other one too, for now. I don't know where the scoop is. This one. Where the heck is my? Where's my scoop, bro? Shit. So let's go downstairs, maybe. Scoops my bag, my pride. Okay. So today we're going to the gym. We have 145 deadlift. If you guys are wondering, my bench, my bench is 150. I never counted the bar, which is I'm completely foolish because I always forget to ca count the bar weight. So I actually didn't. Um, cause I normally just I, ne I normally just count the weights on the on the bars, not the like uh, not the bar itself. So that's obviously foolish by me. So I ended up finding finding out that my 105 bench is actually 150 bench. So that's a big mistake right there. But my squat is not that great. My squat's only 100. My squat's 100. My deadlift is 140 currently. And my bench PR is 150. But I'm hovering around like 135-ish in, in terms of the bench. I'm not going to push more than that. Let's just chill for now until I add more weights. Um... So today we're going to go for 145 deadlift. Ideally by the end of the year or maybe like halfway through the year, I would like to be able to bench and squat and deadlift my own weight. But obviously that is kind of a big goal. I don't know if that's going to be... Okay, that may be a little bit... I don't even need that much of this shit. I just do this too that much. Okay. But obviously that is a big goal. I don't think it'll take a whole year for me to do those things. But the squat might. The squat might take me a whole year to the bench my own to squat my own way. Cause that squatting is it's definitely difficult. I'm still learning, trying to perfect my form still. But the bench and the deadlift, I think I can definitely bench and deadlift my own weights halfway through or six months from now. So half a year. I'd say that sounds about right. But no more time wasting. I don't want to talk for too long. I'm gonna get in the gym and, and I'll do a little voiceover and you guys will see what's up. So the plan is we're gonna do deadlift for one set. For the 145, which is going to be my new PR, one set of that. And then I'm going to do a drop set down to like 100 or 110, around the hundred, around the hundreds. I don't want to just drop it down to like 130, that's still too much. And I think after the, the one set of 145, I'm, gonna, I'm already going to be really tired and fatigued. So I'm just going to do a drop set down to like 110, 100-ish. So I'll catch you guys in the gym. So, I don't know if um, a lot of you guys find these videos boring. Or like repetitive, but I can. T I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys right now, man. Um, I think if you're going into the gym, and when and you're finding this gym repetitive, if you just find that working out is repetitive and boring, then I think you're looking at it the wrong way, man. Because you know, as much as I like to say that um, results don't matter. There is, as, and that's the reason why I stopped doing pose downs. I think I already said this, man. I stopped doing pose downs because I don't want to focus on that, on results too much and get fixated over that. But I'm still going to acknowledge the fact that results are a big indicator that you're making progress in the gym. And you guys will see my last clip of this video. You guys will see the size of my arms, man. So you'll see that I am making progress. But the reason why I'm bringing that up is because I don't, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I don't really care how repetitive these videos may be because you know at the end when it comes when it comes down to it unfortunately um I think it is just I think it is that simple man results do speak a lot dude results do speak a lot man and especially when it comes to the gym man I don't really care how repetitive or boring something is because the reason why it, 
like so why did i start doing all the compound movements like what made me want to do squats deadlift and bench like what pushed me to do those things is because i know deep down the, the, the compound movements are one of the most effective ways to grow muscle and if you're somebody that's new to the gym man the amount of like they call them newbie gains but you can seriously get pretty far with newbie gains or i want to say pretty far but you can definitely see some results like within a couple of months because of the fact that you're doing the compound movements because of the fact that you're doing the squats the deadlifts and the benches because it's the most optimal and effective way of body of bodybuilding in my opinion man because i already made this point before you're not going to be able to curl th- uh, not be able to curl 70 pound dumbbells when you're starting off so what can you do instead well maybe you can deadlift 70 pounds but you can't curl it right but still at least you can deadlift 70 so you can obviously your compo movements are what's going to allow you to build strength and that's going to help you progress further in the gym because you're going to be because a lot of the compo movements they use multiple parts of your body the bench uses your upper half of the body but it's not just like one part of the body it's not like a curl or the curl might just focus on your bicep your tricep or whatever or not your sorry not your tricep probably but probably your bicep right so not so not just like and that's the thing right is that the compound movements it's uses multiple parts of your body which makes it a lot more easier it's not a concentrated movement it's not isolated so that's that, that's the reason why a lot of those things in my opinion are a lot more easier so that's how that's gonna it's a good way to judge off your um your starting point depending on what type of combat movement that is. So for me, I'll do the push days, and the bench is, once again, the, all these things are like my baseline. It's kind of, The combat movements are, are like the key component that allows me to dictate whether or not I'm ready to progressive overload or not. And by the way, if you do find that, yes, I still do the same movements, but I've made a lot more other changes as well i've added the face pulls you guys won't see this in this video but i did do two sets of face pulls at the end i was supposed to record it but i had a timer and the timer the timer cut off the uh the recording but that's fine whatever but this clip right here is a good example it's a curl yes it's a bicep curl but it's in a different form i watched one of sam's recent videos and when i was watching one of sam's recent videos there's a clip of him of doing this where he's sitting on a bench and he's, he's using the bench to curl or to assist him while he's curling it by sitting down. I was like, holy shit, this looks amazing. This looks like a really good solid way to build or at least target, really focus and isolate most of the most parts like the tricep and stuff. It's just focused solely on the biceps. So I was like, this looks amazing. I'm going to give this a try. But the thing is, it's still a form of curling, right? So you can still do the same. You can basically do multiple movements that target the same part of the body but it's in a different form, and that's and that's how you make it so that your workout is not repetitive is by doing stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, sure, it's repetitive and it's boring, but still, that's still different, man. If you're changing the form and stuff, that still changes everything a lot. Like what I did with my delts, instead of just trying to do my like side lateral raises, I also did um, or not sorry, not side lateral. Instead of just doing like front lateral raises, I also did side ladder raises now i implemented that so i can hit the side so i can hit the uh what's called side delts more because side delts and the side delts and what's called the side delts and the rare delts are the parts that are most neglected so a lot of the time in my opinion you're gonna have going back to what i said again about being optimal and efficient. You gotta have certain machines that you're like, hey, this machine's good, or hey, this machine's useless and I don't really need it anymore. So, why do I still do pull ups when I have the lap machine? Because I know for a fact that even though I've been doing pull ups for like months and months, maybe years now, or not years, but like over the, <laughs> one to two years, so a while, guys, I've been doing, I've always practiced pull ups and push ups for a long time. You guys already know that. But no matter how much experience I have at doing pull ups, I'm still not going to be able to do them perfectly 100% all the time, which is why I have the lat machine behind me to kind of support me and back me up. Number one, because it's a solid movement and you can't really go wrong with the lat machine. And number two, uh, what's it called? Number two is because of the fact that it targets the back. 
in the back, in my opinion, is still can still be very neglected because um, a lot of the time when you, when you look at somebody that has big shoulders, a, a part of the reason why that person may have a big shoulder, a big chest, is because of their back. The back makes up a lot of the part. It's not just the front of your body that makes up your chest and shoulder. A lot of the times, your back as well. I think it's like seventy. No, it's like I think it's like thirty-five percent is your front and like seventy-five or seventy percent is your back or something crazy. Something crazy like your back, like it really does help with your appearance and your physique. So like that's the reason why, man. Something like doing lat and pulls down and pull downs. I don't feel bad about complete just punishing or not punishing. I don't pummeling my back a lot by doing lat lat pull downs and pull ups is because of the fact that I know for a fact that nobody ever said I don't think anybody ever says man I'm hitting the back too much man I'm hitting the delts too much because the back and the delts especially the front delts you know front delts are probably not neglected as much but the rear delts and side delts yeah those two parts were neglected a lot probably but once again you can never feel you can never do those two areas too much so as long as you're pushing yourself in the gym, I think you'll be fine. But later down the road, I think it's really important that you do ask yourself why you're doing certain movements. And I'm not perfect, man. In this clip, you can guys see I'm not I'm not perfect, man. I'm, I'm curling fifty easy bar, but but my arm my my hands are too uh, far apart still. They need to be like glued together, pretty much practically. So that was one problem with this clip. The other problem with this clip was I was already super tired and fatigued. As I can tell. I'm literally like lying on the freaking cushion because I'm tired of shit. So I probably should have reduced the weight down to 40 instead of 50. But as you gradually, like something like like what I just told you, I just corrected myself by watching this clip within like 10 seconds. So, but obviously for somebody that's, and I still make these mistakes because I don't pay attention enough. But once again, you can always learn and better yourself. There's never a point where you're not learning and bettering yourself. It's just constant uphill stream of continuous learning. But I think that's enough for me, guys. And I'll catch you guys on Thursday for Push Day Bench.